Thank you. All right. Wow, it's great to see so many people here out here celebrating with us tonight. I want to thank you all so much for spending your evening and spending time here with Red Hat. I was reflecting on Alex's last slide, collaboration never gets old. When I started with Red Hat, I had no gray hair. And I'm pretty sure when Alex started at Red Hat, he had no gray hair. So collaboration doesn't get old, but the people working here fight a little. Now, it, 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 look, the, the, I'm so excited to celebrate Red Hat's 25th anniversary, and I so appreciate the fact that you're all here. But I have to say, it's odd at Red Hat in talking about ourselves and what we've accomplished because... You know, whenever we talk about ourselves, we always have to back up and say we represent a community. And so I think in Red Hat tries to be relatively humble in who we are because we really do reflect the value that thousands of people working in so many ways uh, have created. And so for the next few minutes, I will talk some about Red Hat, but I wanna start saying thank you to so many people in this room who made us who we are and what we've been able to accomplish. I was with a customer today and the customer, one of the customers there was saying, he's actually been using Red Hat for almost 25 years, since before we had an enterprise product. And I do want to recognize there's so many people who made us successful. You know, Red Hat is a company, and I'll talk a little bit about our history and what we've done, has kind of made a business model. We exist because of upstream developers and the work that they've done, but very importantly, we exist because of the renegades and large organizations who took a chance on us 25 years ago or 20 years ago, the people who saw the power and the potential of doing things themselves and working in communities, and we would not be here today in our form without some of the people in this room and people, and people like the people in this room around the world who took a chance on us, who were passionate about open source, who were willing to take a risk, who were willing to roll up their sleeves and participate. And so the next few minutes I'm going to talk about Red Hat, but more broadly, what I'm talking about is the movement that we to some extent represent. And we wouldn't be here without many of the people in this room here tonight, many of the people who are on the webcast and certainly people around the world who took a chance on us, who decided it's time for a change, enough is enough. And so I do, I'm going to talk about Red Hat, but I hope this doesn't come off as arrogant or us saying how great we are, because we just represent the communities who have just done incredible, great, great work. And so thank you all for your participation in the past and today and in the future to make us successful. Because as a company, we are tiny, 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 right? You know, our market capitalization versus Microsoft, I think we're 3% of Microsoft's market capitalization, right? The way we partner and compete and exist in the world is by having passionate people around the world who are truly motivated and understand the power of participation and the things that we can accomplish together. So yes, I'm gonna talk some about Red Hat tonight, but I hope this doesn't come off as us saying we're great. I hope this comes off as saying is together as a community, we've accomplished great things. So this is our 25th anniversary and we were formed roughly 18 months after Linus Torvalds sent his iconic message, which is almost exactly 27 years ago. It was actually in August 2001 when he sent his first message, I'm gonna do this little hobby operating system, which ultimately turned into Linux. So if you think about that, it wasn't even an operating system 27 years ago. It was barely an operating system when Red Hat formed. So we literally are and part of the beginning of the open source movement. And again, hopefully we represent in a commercial sense the power and the momentum that, that's occurred out of open source. So yes, we are 25 years, but when I say we, I specifically didn't say Red Hats, we as a movement are 25 years and what we've accomplished is truly extraordinary. Now, Red Hat started as a magazine 
This isn't a copy of the magazine. I looked for a copy of the magazine. I couldn't find one. With a literally a version of Red Hat Linux in the back of the magazine saying if you want to read about computers, you could go get this magazine that would have a DVD. Actually, it wasn't a DVD. It was a CD in the back that had, remember those? A lot of people here too young with streaming services. A CD before a DVD, right, with a version of Red Hat Linux in it. And frankly, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out a business model that goes along with this. So this, again, was associated with the CD-ROM of Red Hat Linux. And we originally had a business model of can we sell this at Best Buy or computer stores for people to go install on their computers at home? And that was not a good business model. And then someone proposed this business model. So get this. Traditional software companies sell you the software, and they give you the T-shirts and coffee mugs. Our model's different. We give you the software, but we sell you the T-shirts and coffee mugs. <laughs> that also was not a very good business model. But I will say one of the things that I think Red Hat has contributed to the open source movement, which I think is really critical to the development, not only of open source software, but in general, as we think of um, how people can contribute to open communities, but also generate profits to support themselves, is a business model. And I'll come back on the next slide and talk about the business model. But for those of you who know Red Hat but haven't quite followed what we've done, we are one of the 10 largest software companies in the world, which, and we literally, last quarter, we passed over the $3 billion a year run rate, which I think is a feat for any software company. But the fact that we do that without having any intellectual property and without selling any intellectual properties, pretty amazing. Um, and again, I'll come back and talk a little bit about that model and what we developed, because I think that's going to be important in the long run in education and in healthcare and in so many other endeavors where sharing information can be so important. But just a little bit of where we are, Alex talked a little bit about the majority of the Fortune 500 uses us. We are 12,000 associates around the world. I'm still trying to get over that. When I joined Red Hat then almost 11 years ago, we were 1,200 employees. We are now 12,000 uh, associates in 35 countries around the world. And again, we're one of the 10 largest software companies in the world. And knock on wood, if we continue our growth rate over the next couple of years, we will be one of the five or six largest software companies in the world. Um, this shows our revenue, our relative revenue trajectory. I'm certain we're the only software company that can say we have 64 quarters of constant uninterrupted growth as a business. Now, I will say if you look at this, that starts in 2003. Obviously, Red Hat started in 1993. So I think one of the big contributions that we have contributed to open source is a business model that actually works. And I think I don't want to spend a whole lot of time because I stand between you and food and more beer. But I do want to just spend a moment on the model, right? I think that one of the pieces that Red Hat figured out is the power of participation is an incredible thing. But figuring out how to take that massive amount of innovation and making it usable for enterprise customers is a different thing. And so Red Hat in its next incarnation really started around 2003 when we came out with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And that was, how do you take the power of all this open source innovation but make it usable for enterprises and enterprise contacts? So that's when we really hit our next generation where we understood the participation is a powerful thing for developing innovation. But taking innovation and making it usable is a different thing in the business model that we've ultimately built. And obviously, it's been up and to the right for a long, long time. I'm often asked about how a company that started a, around open source and specifically around Linux, you know, 
how have all of a sudden we become not just a top 10 software company, but a company that's listed in, you know, Forbes is one of the most innovative company in the world, and a company that's listed as uh, um, in multiple things as a place that is driving the next wave of innovation. I mean, what what happened? How have we been able to move from helping build an operating system to something much broader than that. And I want to spend the next few minutes talking about it because I think this is really important. All of you here tonight have a stake in who Red Hat is and what we've accomplished as an open source movement. But one of the things that I've noticed over time is we can talk about the software and what we've done, but what's really happened is the world around us has changed and the capabilities that we as an open source community have developed are becoming dramatically more important to business success. And I would actually argue economy success, and that has a whole set of broader social implications. Very simply, for a number of reasons associated with technology and other things, businesses are being disrupted. And that brought it to enterprises, governments, any large institution is now being disrupted. And that's with the internet allowing a new means of communication, that's things like blockchain, allowing distributed trust. Broadly, the way organizations created value in the past, whether that's enterprises making products or large organizations organizing large groups of people, are being disrupted, right? Take a simple example, Uber, and Uber I think is an overutilized example. The example I talk about with Uber is Uber has a hyper-efficient way to manage the maintenance on several million vehicles around the world. Right, when you think about if you're UPS or I used to work in an airline, how do you manage maintenance on millions of vehicles around the world? Well, it's hard, right? You have these huge plans and linear programs and big contracts. How does Uber do that? It relies on individuals and their own economic incentives to make the right decisions. That's simple. So enterprises for so many reasons and in so many ways are being fundamentally disrupted. And most enterprises realize they don't really quite know what they should do about it. I mean, there's surveys out there talking about every enterprise knows they're being disrupted, but very few actually have a bold strategy to work to address this disruption. And so what does this have to do with Red Hat and what does this have to do with open source broadly? Well, let me go to the next slide. Red Hat was an early disruptor. So we can talk about you know Uber and Tesla and Airbnb and Amazon. Red Hat 25 years ago started a process of disrupting an industry, being the way software is developed and consumed. And, you know, I actually had some slides that I pulled out of my presentation that matched some of the things that Alex said. The large vendors around the world are having to embrace open source. They're having to admit that in so many areas, building and selling intellectual property makes no sense anymore. That in so many areas, leveraging the power of communities and user-driven innovation is a better way to develop software. So we've been a disruptive force for many, 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 many years and broadly across an industry. And I think one of the powers that we are seeing with Red Hat and Red Hat's growth, but importantly, the skill set of people who've been involved in open source communities is enterprises need a new set of capabilities to be successful in a digitally transformed world. And so, one of the things I find amazing in our relationship to Red Hat, and I'll come back and talk about it in a couple of slides, is companies aren't looking to Red Hat necessarily just for technology solutions. They're looking for us to be a partner to help them through a broader digital transformation. And so even the way I talk to customers, so this is a slide that I use with CIOs around the world often, and when we say, who is Red Hat? Because in some ways you can describe Red Hat as a technology stack, right? We sell container native, you know, a container platform. We sell open stack. We sell Linux, et cetera, et cetera. But I think more important in who we are in the way that enterprises 
get value working with Red Hat, and one could broaden this to the open source community is, we are a bridge between open innovation, user-driven innovation, and the enterprise context in which they live. And sure, that includes technology. That's how do we bring a container platform to enterprises to be able to build applications more quickly. I don't want to trivialize that. That's kind of a key part of who we are and what we do. But just as important as thinking about, well, what is the architecture that allows for success? And then finally, what are the cultural elements which allow people to work better and more effectively together to innovate at a fundamentally different pace? The biggest challenge I hear from CEOs around the world is their organizations are optimized for driving efficiency in a static environment. If you want to build a million cars cheaply, the large automakers around the world can tell you how to do that. You want to talk about how to, as an automaker, respond to autonomous driving, none of them can tell you exactly how to build that capability to do that. Fundamentally, our world is shifting from a world where we planned, we told enterprises, we told our people what we wanted them to accomplish, we described how they should do that or prescribed that, and we executed to a very, very, very different world. And so when we talk to enterprise customers now, so much of the conversation is very much around capabilities and how can enterprises build the capabilities to survive and thrive in a vastly different world that is the economic model of the 21st century versus the 20th century. And one of the things we talk a lot about, and this is all from the open source movement, so we're not smart enough to come up with anything new. Our, our role is to represent open source and the open source movement. Traditional enterprises are really good at planning, right? They have a sense of, all right, here's the position I want to take, and let me describe that well. Let me prescribe the activities required to get there, and then execution is about driving compliance against that. So it's this kind of plan, prescribe, execute model. What we found in open source is in a world where we're really not sure of where the future's growing, going and where innovation starts to be as important as efficiency, rather than plan, prescribe, execute, we're living in a world where we need to configure our organizations for success. So configure, configuring for success in an ambiguous world, replace planning. We need to enable our organizations to make decisions along the way. So rather than prescribing a set of activities, we need to enable our organizations for success. And then finally, execution, what leaders do every day, isn't driving compliance. It's much more about engaging with communities, engaging with employees to tailor the best solution in the moment with the, with the most up-to-date information. And I think the reason Red Hat has been so successful, and one of the reasons open source is becoming one of the primary ways that innovation is happening is because the world we live in is moving from a world of optimizing for execution to a world that's really about balancing to optimizing for innovation. And really, leaders' roles and organizations' roles go from configuring, enabling, and engaging. And if you think about what good open source communities do, it's not about and Linux and open source and, and Linux is a great example of this. Doesn't say, here's where we're going to be in five years, and here's what people need to do, and I'm going to hold you accountable to that. It's creating a context in an organization and a governance structure that is configured for success in any environment with enabled people who are engaged to ultimately make the right decisions. So for Red Hat, and I'm going to be quick on these next few slides because again, I know I'm standing between you and drink refills and food. You know, we do spend a lot of time thinking about what does it mean to configure for success and thinking about architecture and how do we think about technology architectures uh, in this new world. And, you know, for us, that's making sure that we can develop next generation applications in a way that can run anywhere. You know, the original proposition of Red Hat Enterprise Linux was your right to Red Hat Linux and it'll run on a Dell server or an HP server or a Fujitsu server. Now, 
we need to be able to do that across a much broader landscape. So one of the key value propositions that Red Hat tries to bring is either at the operating system level or at the application level, especially the container application level, develop once, run anywhere. So build a containerized application, you can run it on premise, bare metal, you can run it on Azure or Google or wherever you want to, to run it. And so leveraging the power of open innovation, we are trying to make sure that we are creating the context for organizations to be successful in their own execution. And that context for execution can be at the technology level, it can ultimately be at the management strategy level. Clearly this is an example at the technology level and something that we're passionate about and working every day to deliver. I think one of the hardest things that enterprises have trouble with and one of the key lessons we've learned out of open source is we have to use a different process to get to the answers that we want to get to. And so, again, in a known world where we know what the problems are and we're driving to be efficient in solutions, the traditional, whether it's waterfall in IT or traditional planning processes in strategic planning, you know, you basically say, here's where I want to be in the future, let me write towards that. In an ambiguous world that we live in, that no longer works. And so thinking about how we actually interact with each other, how we structure work, becomes a critical aspect of success. And so, you know, in a technology concept, the context that can be uh, DevOps, that can be agile, that can be a whole bunch of flavors of how you work. In a business context, it can be how do you build the concepts of experimentation into how you run your organization. And this is a fascinating area where I found for Red Hat, more and more when I talk to CEOs around the world, they want to affiliate with Red Hat and more broadly open source communities to say, there's a different way to organize to be successful uh, for innovation. Finally, and I think this is really critical, organizations around the world have built cultures for success in the 20th century. And, and what I mean by that and is in the 20th century, in a world of mass manufacturing, success was driving out variance from your processes, right? Lean Six Sigma. How do we get more efficient? A manager's role day to day is to make sure activities are well coordinated and that you're driving compliance against a set of plans. And that's a probably the best system ever designed to drive efficiency in a static environment. That is not the world that most of our companies work in today, certainly our customers and many of the places where you work today, where in a more transformed world, building the capability to innovate is just as important as building the capability for efficiency. And what I find so many companies that I talk to say, oh, I've tried to change, I've tried to build a change management process and my culture is just unwilling to change. It's a cultural problem. And what I always want to come back to organizations and say is, culture's not an input, culture's an output, right? Culture is the output of the leadership uh, traits that you've uh, exposed and kind of out to your people. It's what you value, it's who you promote, it's your processes that drive that. If you want to change your culture, you need to, choose to change the way you operate. The number of companies and CEOs have come to me say, I want to understand this open source culture because I want to be like that. My answer always back to that is, yes, there are attributes to a more open culture that can make you more innovative, but you don't directly change culture. You change, again, your leadership style. You change what you reward behaviors that are celebrated, you change the messages that you send. Culture's an output. But one of the things I found that I think has driven Red Hat success in the last few years is companies wanting to understand a new way of operating. And so for Red Hat, whether it's we actually publish a book called The Open Organization or Open Innovation Labs, which is a process we take people through to teach the open source methodology, I do believe that long term, 
one of the most powerful things that open source is going to give to business has nothing to do with technology. It is teaching organizations how to build an efficient, effective structure to innovate in a large scale and distributed way. And so Red Hat gets more credit, frankly, than we deserve for that. But so many organizations are working with us today saying, teach us how this open source thing works because we do need to innovate at a different level and I understand that it's cultural and you can help me do that. Um, Red Hat's always had a mission statement and many of you have probably heard it, which is not this, right? Our mission statement's always been to be the catalyst in communities of customers, uh, uh, contributors, and, and partners building better technology the open source way. We as a company wanted to step back and say, well, is that really, what's our bit broader why statement? Why do we exist? And so we ran a process over the last year, kind of culminating with our 25th year anniversary with this, why do we exist? What, what do we believe down deep in who we are? And we came up with this as our why statement, open unlocks the world's potential. And I want to come back to this a little bit because we are passionate about open source software and we love to talk about open source software. But I deeply, deeply passionately believe that the problems that we have in the world today, whether that's climate change, I mean, you can array a set of problems, cannot be solved with one company. They're not necessarily a software solution, but we need to have people around the world working together in an open way to solve that set of problems. When I say open unlocks the world's potential, I think we believe, and I've had an opportunity to see working with CEOs and some of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, in order to solve the biggest, most complex problems, we have to be open and we have to work together. And one of the really exciting things about what open source has done, and hopefully what Red Hat has represented as a key proponent of open source, is that we can do it with some of the most complex problems in information technology. We can do that on a broader stage. So whether that's in education, whether that's in healthcare, whether that's in government, the power of people working together, the power of user-driven innovation is an extraordinary lever. And, you know, in the 20th century, mass manufacturing was the lever that allowed us to become dramatically more efficient as a in a global economy. I'm convinced in the 21st century, innovation is what will drive productivity growth. And importantly, figuring out how to have thousands of people work together to be more innovative than small groups of people is the key to unlocking productivity. In other words, how do you make 10,000 people working together on a problem more efficient than 10 groups of 1,000 people, right? What, what, what scale and innovation? And the best model we have for that so far is open source. And so the biggest intellectual problems we have to solve in the 21st century will be solved when we all work together. And so I know this is really a celebration you're here around Red Hat and the 24th, 25th anniversary of Red Hat. It really is a celebration of open source and what we've accomplished so far. And importantly, what I think we can accomplish more broadly by working together in so many different areas. You know, Red Hat, by being a successful commercial company, I get the opportunity to talk to leaders in so many areas. I was talking to the CEO of one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world recently about how to use share information across pharmaceutical companies to get better outcomes for human beings. We're only having that conversation because Red Hat has shown that you can build an economic model around sharing. And I do think that's one of our, hopefully our contributions to the open source movement is to take it beyond software and demonstrate that this is truly value creating for the world around us. So again, this is celebrating 25 year anniversary. All of you have been a part of making that happen. But more broadly, I wanna thank you all for your contributions to what I believe will be the next phase of growth and prosperity as we look forward 
to humankind in the 21st century. So thank you so much for being here. I look forward to having a chance in the next few hours to meet as many of you as possible. Um, thank you. Yeah. Yeah.